Breaking up is hard. This is a video that I always knew that I, I, would, I would eventually be getting to the point of doing this. I just didn't think it was going to be this soon and on these terms. So, you know, when you've been doing business with somebody or you've been going out with somebody, you've been a partner or a vendor or a customer for many, many years, you, you're not really just that one thing anymore. You become a lot more to that, to that person. So if you're, a, if you're a customer of somebody for five years, you're not just a customer. You're kind of a sounding board for their business ideas. You become a, a counselor for when things don't go well. You become somebody who may seek that from the other person. You're going to talk about your ideas. You're going to talk about what's going on in the business. You're going to talk about how that affects you in your life. And in some way, that kind of makes you friends. And, when, and here's the problem with friendship and business is that I treat friends differently than I treat people in business. So, for example, if you're routinely, routinely, eh, on a regular basis, sending stuff back that doesn't work, then I'm not going to bitch at you the same way that I might bitch at somebody who is, um, who, who, who is a standard vendor. And if you are sending me, like, parts, I mean, like, for example, when I buy shit like this, like little DCN boards and screens and stuff, when you're sending me stuff that costs maybe 10 or 20% more than retail when you used to send me stuff at a wholesale price, probably not going to bitch like I'm supposed to. When you start sending stuff that actually has green, like green liquid fucking damage on it, probably not going to bitch like I'm supposed to. When you start reheating the entire motherboard and reballing the small graphics chip instead of, uh, instead of reballing the LVDS MUX chip, I'm not going to complain the way I should. When you are replacing the PP3v42 regulator and ignoring every single other corroded pile of shit around it so it dies one day after I give it back to a customer, not going to bitch at you like I'm supposed to. When you have an actual back and forth conversation with us where you're explaining why it is that every single MacBook Air and Retina that you repair is going to run slow as balls when you send it back to us because it's impossible to fix those when the reality is that you just don't know how to program BIOS ME regions, not going to bitch at you the way I'm supposed to. But at some point, at some point, things kind of have to come to an end. So I, over the past year and a half, I have been winding down business with a company that I've been using for a really long time. And I feel bad about this because it's, it's a company that where I, I honestly like the owner in some ways. And in other ways, I don't like them. And I've had this thing my entire life where the people that I get along with, the people who I really truly get along with are usually people who in some way are kind of fucked in the head and you can never kind of tell if they're, um, if they're good people or if they're kind of screwing you over. It's, you know, these people that are kind of shaking your hand with, with, the, with, the, with the right while taking out the you know, back pocket with the left. And this is one of those situations. Um, I was introduced to him about almost five years ago. And we did, you know, we did business with Border Pair, and uh, we started out actually with ordering back covers for the A1286 from 2008 and 9. So this was a part that back then would cost three or four or five hundred dollars by itself, and we were getting it for one or two hundred dollars. This is the kind of thing that can really help, really help accelerate your business to the next level. Uh, being able to get component level motherboard repair from a good source before I really had the tools or know how to do it. That's something that really kind of helped elevate my business to the next level and it was something that I found really valuable at the time. And again, the thing with a lot of relationships you're going to notice is that they start out, they may start out great, but over time, it kind of starts slipping. But you're going to feel bad uh, to, to bring this up. You're going to feel bad leaving because it started out great and you feel like you're leaving somebody that, 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 that really did well for you at some point in your life. And, th and that's, kind of, that's kind of where I was. And with this whole motherboard repair YouTube channel, you have to understand, if you have somebody that will do all this stuff for you for a very good rate, and you're a business owner who works 12 hours a day, that you're probably not going to say, instead of working 12 hours a day for a year, I'm going to work 17 hours a day for a year so that I can learn component level board repair. That's the kind of thing that you do when the person who's doing it for you is doing all that shit that's causing you nightmares and hassle and misery. And the one thing that I have to, I have to particularly thank the person that I'm talking about breaking up with in this video for is this entire YouTube channel, this entire uh, idea of teaching you component level board repair so you don't have to rely on other people, that all came, that all that entire journey started because of my business dealings with this one guy. And he's not a bad individual. He's a nice guy. But again, this concept of we're going to fix a board for you that is not booting into the OS. We're going to test it by booting it into Windows 7 because it won't boot in a Mac OS. Then we're going to send it back to you and mark it as fixed and charge you. That, like, that is all, all these little things really culminated and added up to me saying, I would rather uh, not have a life 
for one full year so that I could become an expert in this field than ever send something to you again. And that is kind of what, what really motivated me to get this entire YouTube channel going. It's what motivated me to start a class. It's what's motivated me to help all of you people who watch this who want to learn something. And it's really come a long way. If, if, you, told me, if, you, if you told me years ago, Lewis, you are going to be one of the top 15 people in the world that repairs MacBook motherboards, at finding the faults and knowing how all this stuff works. If you told me I'm going to be probably one of the top 15, 20 people who does this, I would fucking laugh at you and throw you out of my office and say, like, you know, you want something out of me. There, You are sucking up. There is no way in hell that's true. And I'm at a point right now that when I'm stuck and when I have a question and when I am confused about the cause of a problem, there is, there's nobody who's going to answer that question for me. Maybe, maybe one person who's, who's, who sometimes will be able to provide me with help. But when I have a problem, there's really nobody else out there that can answer it. And it's really, and, 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 and as annoying as that is, as annoying as that is, it's actually really cool that that's happened because it means that I actually have enough knowledge that, you know, that, and I've accumulated that knowledge in this really short time frame. And that knowledge is knowledge that this company that's been doing it for this time frame doesn't have. Again, the idea that it's the MUX and not the small graphics chip on the 2523, the idea of it being, the, you know, the idea of, of, of it being an Emmy region issue and not just that retinas are just meant to run slow after you replace the PCH, you replace, or you, you reflash the BIOS. You know, like, I'm telling them this. You guys used to do work that I thought was impossible, and now I'm telling you how to do your job. And that's really something. And that's, and, but the reason, and, and, and it's, it's not a relationship that I can continue because it's just not working. And recently, you know, and here's the biggest problem with breaking up. Here's the biggest problem that I've had with breaking up in my relationships is that whether it's personal, business, or otherwise, is that I often, if I really get along with you, I'm not upfront about the things that annoy me as much as I should be. So, for example, in this instance, um, great vendor, nice guy. Sometimes the stuff doesn't work, whatever. We could send it back, blah, blah, blah. But then it got to a point where I would ask on Skype on a regular basis, you know, here's the one thing with this relationship that was always kind of a little rocky, was if I asked a question that was easy for you to answer, let's say you wanted to liquidate something quickly, or, you know, you, you knew what the answer was, I'd hear back from you quickly. But when I had a question for you that was not convenient to answer, hey, how's this repair going on this board that's probably a nightmare for you? Hey, do you have this? Hey, so, like, when do you think this is going to show up when you know that you probably don't have a great answer for me? Well, what I notice happening is that, here's what I notice happening, is that you disappear. You always kind of conveniently disappear when, it, when it's convenient for you to disappear. And one of the areas in which it was very convenient to disappear is when I would Skype this person and say, hey, I sent you back a returns box. How's it going? And... You know, usually, again, I don't use Skype with vendors. Usually, usually I, I, I use email. I want a record of all these things. And I didn't because of that whole friendship thing. And that's my fault because Skype doesn't log permanently. So where's really the proof that I've been asking about these boxes for months? For all I know, you haven't even been receiving those Skype messages. Maybe that's... But, you, but I, I think you do because you always receive the Skype messages where it's like, hey, I'd like to give you money for stuff that I know you have in stock. So I, I, so I finally said, you know, I'm, I, get, I get this invoice. I get this invoice that's like for two and a half years of shipping charges. Two and a half years of like, tr not even shipping, of transit charges, which I imagine is, you know, probably smuggling stuff from China to Hong Kong, who the hell knows. And it's like, you know, hmm, let me, let's see. And then I get an invoice for, for parts, and, and I, finally, I finally say something. I say, you know what, I'm going to pay this, but I'm not going to pay all of it, because... Every time I ask you about the parts I sent you back, you don't answer me. And you say, you've never sent that. You've never sent though, that in an email. I'm like, yeah, but I mentioned it on Skype. Well, you don't have proof of that. Oh, I don't have proof of it? Here's the thing. kind of comes back to that point where like, I know what I typed. I know what I said. I know that my own staff have actually been throwing away parts because they feel that it's so hopeless that I will ever actually send something back to you. And that's, and that's kind of silly. And then in this recent box, you know, one of the staff members here is actually going through it because he wants to give, you know, some battery to his sister. And he goes through the box. And there's a battery in there that actually has a bunch of blue shit on the connector. And we plug it in. Of course, it's a service battery. The thing lasts for all of nine minutes before it dies. And that battery costs about 15% more, more than what it costs to get it from a good vendor on, 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 um, on eBay, new. And that's, you know, that, that w w what the fuck? And, uh, and, and there are other things that I've kind of overlooked 
And there are other things, you know, this is where the real argument is kind of erupting in this relationship where I'm saying, listen, I'm not going to rip you off. I'm not going to rip you off, but you say I owe you this much. Probably owe you this much. I'm going to give you this much. And it's like, no. Rah, rah. And, uh, and there was another thing. So Rossman Supply that existed about three or four years ago, five years, actually, I started that company maybe like five, five years ago. And, and here's one of the things with, with, with how one of the, the, like the last things that really was a kick in the balls before I finally just got rid of it was I was selling iPhone screens and it's like, hey, why don't you switch over from Jack Telecom to us? We can sell you this stuff. Because I was voicing some of my concerns with Jack Telecom and they weren't a bad company. It's just the pricing wasn't always, it wasn't always what, 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 what it should be. And sometimes they were selling a lot of stuff to iCracked at the time so there would not be parts available for me. So even if I wanted to pay the price, Somebody else who had a lot more money was buying up all the stuff. And he says, you know, why don't you buy from us? And it was going along great, going along great, going along great. One day I get a box and 1,800 screens have the fucking frames on backwards. Or not even backwards, but like where you can't even remove it and put it aside because the hooks are all in the wrong places. And for the ones that didn't have it on backwards, there was this, this issue. We called it frame gate here. Where on the 4 and the 4S, the frame was shaped like this instead of that. So when you put it into the phone, it would actually crack the screen. Now, when you're selling hundreds upon hundreds of these a day, you know what happens when over a thousand of these go out to eBay customers? You know what happens? They file claims. And here's the thing about people who file claims. Uh, they, they often, when they file that claim really, really quickly, and when they file their PayPal claims as well, a lot, sometimes they have to send it back. But sometimes if they use the right words, like let's say uh, counterfeit merchandise, they don't have to send it back. So when they don't send it back, not only do I not have the product to return to you, but I also, I, I don't get the money for it. And that's something that can really suck. So after months of that, needless to say that, you know, that eBay account is, is long gone. And, and, and one of the offending things here is that I see that the, he's like, you know, you didn't finish paying for that stuff. And it's like, excuse me, motherfucker, you know, you told me that you can do better than who I'm buying from now. You sent me a box of stuff that literally damn near ruined a company, ruined an eBay account. And... And now, and now you're, you're saying that you want me to pay pay for all that? Fuck you! And um, and that's really and, and that's kind of where where I'm at. And here and here's the thing: there are a lot of wrong things I did. So you know, the wrong things I did was I kept buying from you. Again, I'm sitting in this little chair in this little room doing motherboard repair all day. I don't. I'm honestly not as in tune with my business as I used to be. I don't really know that my staff are literally taking half of the trackpads that you send us and tossing it in a fucking bin because they're filled with green garbage. I don't know that because I'm, I'm, not, the one, I'm not the one doing it. And they come to me and they're like, listen, stuff has been crap. I didn't know I was buying crap this whole time. And again, it's because of kind of the, the complacency in the relationship. You know, you get complacent in a relationship when, you, when you're married. You may put up with somebody not treating you the way you like. You may put up with them not treating you. You may not put up with them not, not being in the shape that, that you think they should be in if they want to physically impress you. You may start to tolerate a lot of things and you just kind of go with it just because it's what you were going with yesterday. You're going to do it today. And you're prob since you did it today, you're probably going to do it tomorrow. I always ordered from you when repair shoppers inventory things said we're done. I send you the email. When you say you want money, I pay you. I'm not even checking the prices half the time. And now I check the prices and it's like, you want retail for products with, with, with green shit on them. And again, my fault. I should have been telling you, listen, I am not going to pay you if you don't get back to me on these returns boxes. And honestly... I'm looking at this shit here. I'm looking at my list and it's like, I have one box from like April 2014. I have another one from December of 2014. And I always wanted to have a conversation about this. I always wanted to have a conversation about the little problems with the product. I can't, I can't have it. Because anytime I go to have the conversation, hey, did you get that, you get that returns box? Hey, did you have, have time to open my box? You're conveniently not there. And, and it sucks. And you, you, and because... I should have been stern. I, I should have copied and pasted that shit and sent an email because there were so many times where I've Skyped this person and they ignored me. And then I copy and paste my Skype message into the email and just because I, I, I am struggling to get a reply. And I should have done that, but I didn't because I saw them as a friend. And because I saw them as a friend, I'm in this position that I'm in now, which sucks for everybody. Uh, you feel like you're getting ripped off. I feel like I've been periodically ripped off. Again, this entire setup, like me sitting here to do this video at one in the morning, me buying a camcorder so I could record fucking board repairs that I was learning how to do, all of this shit happened 
because we were tired of dealing with one person's crap. And now I'm in this situation where like, I, I wish I, I should read the email. The guy is actually saying like over, I'm not saying I'm not going to pay. I'm saying I'm not going to pay what you want because what you want is an amount that is just fundamentally incompatible with what we've actually received. You send fucked up ass crap. You ignore what I want to send back that fucked up ass crap. You fix boards in a manner where they fail in days and then you want full payment. And you're kind of, again, you're invoicing me for transit charges from two and a half years ago. Like, when I buy something, here's what happens. When I buy something, you say how much it's going to be, then I pay you, that's that. We don't usually, I I don't usually do business with people where they say, okay, you want this, we're going to bill you. Then two years, two and a half years later, we're going to bill you for the transit charges associated with, with, with that product. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I mean... And just to, just to get into billing, like just just the billing nightmare. So this is uh, last year. I remember actually just deciding to go through. It was like two or three in the morning, but it's, you know what? I should go through my invoices. I usually just I look at them. I take a really quick look, and then it's usually separated. Like every time I get invoice from this person, even if it's a small order, it's like five or ten or fourteen or fifteen fucking Excel files that I'm getting at one in the morning. So I don't always go through them. I go through it and I notice, hey, this is for the exact same amount as this one. Hmm. This is the same tracking number as this one. Hmm. This is the same date as this one. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's the same invoice. You're trying to charge me twice for the exact same product. Um, what the fuck? And, and, I, and I, here's, here's, the, here's the fuck. Here's the funny part. I paid the fucking invoice. So I, I, I paid this invoice. Now, and then he's like, oh, whoopsie. And it's like, my, how, how, how many times has this happened? How many times did I just literally just pay you um, where you, where you, maybe you invoiced me twice or three times or four times or for shit that I didn't receive or for shit that didn't work or for shit with 1,800 of them with the frames on backwards that literally ruined a fucking viable business overnight? I'm like, you know, and I'm not kidding when I say that at some point I actually hired somebody. Literally, their entire job was to go through this guy's invoices and make sure that what I received actually lined up with what you know with what we paid for like i actually got to a point where i hired somebody where i thought you know again you you wind up you look at this and you see that you got screwed out of 500 or a thousand or 1500 bucks and yet that's the point at which you realize that your cheapness to have somebody who does nothing but do this is actually going to wind up costing you more than having somebody here who does that type of work for you so i wind up hiring somebody whose only job is to go through that and also to do a couple of other bookkeeping tasks. But primarily, when this fucker sends an invoice, see that what I received lines up with what I paid for. Because again, how many times, like again, how many, how many board repairs that didn't work were never credited? How many parts did you never take back? All this stuff, like it, it, it's a cost. And it, at this point, you know what makes more sense to me rather than going back through five or ten? Uh, what are you going to do? And, and, and here's the thing. This, this is where, like, turning 27, I'm just kind of noticing that I, it really is time to tie up a lot of these loose ends with my life. Because uh, this is a, you know, I made a mistake. I made the mistake of not saying, I want to know right now. I know it's one in the morning. I know I'm tired. I know I don't feel like typing this, but I need to know what's going on with this, that, and the other. I know I'm tired. I know I'm on shitty internet. I know I have to log into Google Drive to find the tracking number to the fucking box because if I don't tell you the tracking number to the fucking box, you're never going to fucking find the fucking box because this is how it is. Usually I send something back. He's like, oh, can you give me a tracking number so I can see if I got it? And you're just always putting a little fucking barrier in between me and getting the in just basic service so i just you know i, I don't want to log into google drive at one in the morning go through all that crap so i'm like i'll just deal with it tomorrow and tomorrow comes and i buy the same shit at the same retail prices 20 at least 20 percent of it doesn't fucking work and and i go on that's my fault but the fact that the stuff that i got was bullshit was kind of your fault and the thing here the thing here that's important is that I am at fault to some extent, but overall, the extent of my fault is with how I dealt with your fault. So I'm at fault with how I dealt with your fault. That doesn't cancel out your fault. And for the course of my life, if I felt I was even this much at fault, it didn't matter if the other person was this much at fault, if I was this much at fault, I canceled out their fault altogether. And that was a fundamentally dumb way to live life. 
it was a way to live life where I'm just, I am just sick and tired of conflict. So that was how I dealt with things. And what I'm finding as I get older is that if you do that, you're going to have a lot worse conflict. Like, um, uh, for example, how am I going to pay my rent when I've let everybody else just shit on me? Uh, how am I going to pay a staff when I've let everybody shit on me? How am I going to explain to this customer that the reason that their stuff doesn't work is because I inserted a liquid damage part in it because I didn't feel like firing a vendor? And it's just, it's just, it's just one of those times. And it's just one of those things that in some ways just kind of makes me sad, you know, uh, there are a lot of things that this person did that were really, really helpful for me. You got to understand, like being in your early 20s and opening a store, that's not something that's easy. Being in your early 20s and not having a lot of money and opening a store. When somebody says, hey, we can provide these parts that nobody else has. We can afford, uh, provide them at affordable prices. And we can provide motherboard repairs to you that are good. You know, and, and we can give you, uh, like, let's say, two weeks of credit. That's a really useful thing to hear when you have somebody coming up to you and saying, we want a $14,000 deposit before you can even walk in the door and start construction. That's a useful thing to hear. There are many ways in which this person helped me. And, oh, and just the, the idea of knowing that motherboards themselves are repairable is something that I learned from, from, from this individual. You know, again, I was one of those people who thought that motherboards, if they didn't work, they were junk. Uh, silly as it sounds, uh, you know, when it comes to audio gear, when it comes to large format PCBs, I didn't think that. But with this stuff, that's really how I thought. And you, and also, again, the, me, you showed me, this guy showed me that motherboards are fixable. He also then showed me that it would irritate me so much that I would, act, and, and knowing that I'm a person who puts my money where my mouth is, that if I say, man, this shit is so bad that I can do better, it actually, it actually kind of motivated me to sit in this chair every day for damn near two years and prove that I can do better. And as a result of it, you know what happened? I did do better. I solved the problems that this jackass couldn't solve. I solved the problems that his technicians couldn't solve. And the stuff that I was doing, was stu it's not stuff where like a day later, it's junk. Okay, but the stuff that's totally corroded, like completely corroded to crap, maybe. But for the most part, for the most part, the stuff that's not corroded completely to fuck, you know, it, it's fixed. If, if I see that there is a corroded CPU IMVP ton resistor, I will simply flick it off and replace it rather than wait for it to come back. If I see that R9731 is nasty, I will replace R9715 along with it. It's just, if I have to replace ISL 6259, if there's a little bit of corrosion on the trace around R7, you know, R7021, R7022, I might just go over the trace with some solder, or I might just replace R7021 and 7022, because I don't want to see you again with saying, you know, it says not charging, you know, why'd I pay you? And it sucks, because at the end of the day, when you break up with somebody, what you're, what you're doing is you're telling them that they're not good enough. You're telling them that they're not good enough for your standards. You're telling them that uh, what they've provided is not good enough. You're telling them that they're probably never going to be good enough. You're telling them, and you're telling them to go away. That's fundamentally offensive. You're telling them something that they don't want to hear. In business, when you're breaking up, you're telling them that you're not going to be receiving my money anymore. Hey, I know you were making a living off of my wage, but you're fired. Now you don't get to make a living. And, that, and that's hard to do. And in these situations, what I'm doing is I'm telling somebody, hey, thank you very much for helping me in the beginning, but what you've done now has really hurt me. So fuck you. And that's not something that is, uh, that's not something that is really that easy to do. And it's not something that really feels great to do. And it's, it's something I really wish I didn't have to do, but like, what, what, what am I, I going to do? I, 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 I can't go back in time and pester you more because you have repeatedly ignored my request to just, to, to just talk about this as an issue at all or to, fi or, or to find the boxes that I have sent back to you, which... Again, it's like I see in the I see in the emails. It's like the person's complaining and saying, you know, I look back to our Skype to May of this year and I have found nothing. And it's like, well, yeah, I sent this thing back May of last year. So it's you know, again, it's it's um, it's one of those things where it it, it it's so long ago that you're probably not gonna find that shit. <laughs> you're, you're you're not. Um, and and I can't go back in time and change it. And breaking up is hard. Breaking up is probably easy if you allow yourself to get raped. If, if you, again, if, if, you, if you're dating somebody and you're like, okay, well, I can't move out immediately. And, I'd, and, then, and then the person says, well, I want to stay dating. I want to start dating other people again immediately. And I want to do that while I'm living under your roof. And I want to have sex with those people in your bed. 
No. Because when you break up with people, they're going to try to come up with the terms that are most convenient to them. And here, obviously, the most convenient terms that this person can come up with is saying, you know what? Okay, how about you pay for every single part, every single transit charge that I'm probably pulling out of my ass, and every single board repair, including every single one that didn't work, including every single part you've ever sent back to me. And we'll just forget about the iPhone screens that I sold you three years ago that were all counterfeit junk garbage that were unfucking usable that could not go into a phone that were worthless those are the most convenient terms i don't feel like breaking up on the terms that are most convenient to you the most convenient terms to me would be to say hey fuck you i'm not paying you at all that's what's most convenient to me but i'm not going to do that either i want to break up on terms that are fair and what you're going to find is that it's really 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 hard to come up with terms that are fair to break up with somebody on. It really is. And you're going to have to think really hard about it, and you're going to have to come up with something that's fair. You're going to come up with a number. You're going to come up with a time or a date or whatever, whatever it is. You're going to come up with some separation terms that are fair. And when you come up with those terms, when you come up with those terms, you got to stick to them. Here's why. If, you, if the other person starts talking and, say, and making a point that gets them to change one of your terms, that means that their view is right, which means that they're just going to push, push, push and push for what is most convenient to them. Go back to that manipulation video since they got you that one time. They're going to get you again and 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 it's just all going to go to shit from there. So that's that for today. And I'm sure this is going to be something that's heard about more often. I'm sure that there is like, uh, I, I honestly, you know what? I don't care. Um, it, one of the great benefits, I think, of this channel is that I have liberated a lot of people from having to deal with this bullshit. I have liberated a lot of people from having to wait weeks upon weeks upon weeks to get something back, be billed for it, hear it don't work, have to send it all the way back to China for that same little fucktard to reheat the same little chip when he should have been re you know, replacing the capacitor right next to the fucking chip that he was eating anyway. And, you know, if, if, the, if the one thing that I have to say thank you for above all else to this one person. The one thing I have to say thank you for above all else, thank you for motivating me and empowering me to do my own in-house component level MacBook motherboard repair. Without you, I would have, without, without just my sheer fucking disdain for, for, for all the crap that you've made up, all the bullshit I've gotten back, all the, all the junk, all, I, I, and all the lies, and all the, I, I would have never had what it took to sit here for years of my life and learn and learn something that otherwise would I probably would have never undertaken and I would have never become one of the best at it and I would have never probably been sitting here um, making the money that I am. Now I can't say that I've never given my customers headaches. I am sure that I've given my customers headaches and I'm sure that I've sent back stuff that didn't work. But you know what I can say I did that they didn't is that I gave you the tools, the information, the motivation, and the guides for free to empower you to do that work. So if you don't like the way I'm doing it, great. Here's all the information. Go do it better. I put that out there so I don't really feel that guilty. Even if I have done some things that haven't been 100% perfect, I don't have that I don't have that guilt because I know that even if you weren't able to get the best work out of me for whatever circumstance at whatever time, that I've put the information out there so that if you didn't feel you were getting what you deserve, then you would be able to build and provide that for yourself, and it was all at no cost. Ironically, you know, his reply to my email saying, listen, I'm going to pay you. I'm not going to pay you everything, but I'm going to pay you is, you know, you must, it's, none of this matters because you're going out of business anyway. Um, there is more money being made here than there ever was. And it's all off of what I'm able to do from what I've learned. And I learned all of that because I was just sick and tired of fucking dealing with you. And that's, that, that's really a nice outcome to a, to a five-year story.